Belisarius Prime and Eleanor are almost here, but I've got some predictions on how this is going to influence where you should invest your legendary commander sculptures. So stick around in this video for an update to the most watched tier list series for all of Rise of Kingdoms. Let's get going. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chesco Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And I maintain this legendary investment tier list, the best place to put your legendary sculptures right now. That's not to say that some of these commanders that aren't at the top of the list are bad. In fact, some of the ones I would say are not a great investment can still be very good right now. The way you use this list is to say, hey, if I'm putting sculptures into a commander today, which ones does Chiskel Gaming think are going to last for at least a year or two? And of course, things change around with changes to the meta, and we've got to update that now with Belisarius Prime and Eleanor. What will change? Now, if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing, but let me just go through very briefly the way that you use this list, and this is the way the list was last month in March. The way that this works is that the top priority commanders are the ones that, if you haven't maxed these out, I don't really know why you'd look anywhere else unless you need to fill out a march. You like need a, uh, you know, a commander of a different troop type and you've already got the ones in top priority sorted out. You, you start with top priority and move on from there. The low priority is what you do next. These are the commanders that you would look to after you've already maxed your top priority commanders if you're trying to fill out a march. The before season of conquest section are the three legendary commanders that Chiskel Gaming gives a thumbs up approval for working on before you get to Season of Conquest. So KVK Season 1, KVK Season 2, if you wanted to work on commanders, those are the ones. Niche role means that you can work on these, but you better know what you're doing and why you're getting them. And for the most part, at this stage, you're probably going to skip them for the top priority and the low priority. Then there's the just no category. All the commanders that you just should not put a single sculpture into in uh, 2024 and beyond. Then there's the free category. Not to say that free commanders are bad, but simply to say, if you're putting universals here, they're not going up in the top of the list, and that is alarming. So you can do the free ones, but I probably wouldn't recommend it, all right? So this brings us to a few changes that need to be made. And before we even rank Belisarius Prime, let's talk about the fact that Alexander the Great's about to get another tier of museum buff. Wow. This, in my opinion, makes Alexander the Great a better investment than uh, Esong. Esong is really good, but is outclassed by other endgame archers. Alexander the Great is arguably outclassed with Gorgo in a Liucha and Gorgo combo, but Alex is so good that like, it's, it's fine. You don't need, you don't need to put 700 sculptures into Gorgo. You could just use Alex, especially if you already have an Alex, that's amazing. But as far as investments go, I think Alex gets bumped up a little bit to the left means I think it's better than the ones to the right. And I'm going to take this Gorgo and I'm going to put her down in niche roll. Okay. Now that Alex is as good as he is, like you just don't really need to invest sculptures into Gorgo to have something phenomenal to go and use. So that's a pretty big change. It's possible that other commanders will change with the additional museum buffs that are going to be showing up, but I don't think so. What I do now need to go and do is rank Belisarius Prime. Now, there is so much confusion about the way the skills are going to work on Belisarius Prime. The thing that has me hyped is that the active skill is going to reduce the rage of the enemy and elevate the rage requirement. This is good in the field. It's crazy in Canyon. It does require your target to be surrounded. And on the topic of surrounding your targets, surrounded targets are going to take more all damage from the expertise if you have three or more things surrounding. That's not as good in Canyon, but that's insane in the field. And it's very good in situations where you're swarming a garrison if that's the thing you're doing. Now, this is an open field list oriented towards free-to-play players and low spenders. But here is what I think 
the new world order is going to look like with Belisarius Prime. I got to drag him all the way up to the top. This list is so big now, it actually requires me to scroll. I think he goes into top priority. I think Belly Prime is going to be more important to work on than Nevsky. The defense reduction is nice, but the all damage debuff is better. I think that he's going to be better than Joan. We already would, I think, for the most part, say, most people would say, like three-fourths would say, based on polls I've done, that Nevsky is a higher priority than Joan. But I think Belly is going to be a higher priority than them both. And I would say that Zuge Leong, Herman Prime, and Liu Che are all up there as top-tier commanders. I would say that Belly Prime goes up there too because 12% all damage is instantly delivered as a debuff when you swarm, assuming it's going to work that way, which is what a bunch of people are saying. A bunch of people are saying it's not. I mean, we'll see when we get it. But I think that's what this is going to look like for priority, which puts us in a weird spot because I actually think there's a Cav Commander I need to bump out of this priority. And you might be a little surprised, but I like to be aggressive with cuts to this list. And the Commander I'm going to cut is actually... Huo. Now, the reason I'm cutting Huo is that he doesn't actually offer any meaningful debuff. I think he reduces march speed. That's nice, right? It's definitely nice, but if you haven't already maxed Huo, I don't think I'd start putting sculptures into him today. I will still be using Huo. I still feel like, actually, if given the opportunity, I, you know, I can feel two cavalry marches with my equipment and my armaments, I will probably still try to use Huo and also, I'm going to try to use an artifact to switch one of my cavalry commanders into an infantry commander when I open field. So I can use five cavalry. So my intention will still be to use Huo and William and Joan Prime and Nevsky and Belly Prime. However, I think that if you were starting to put sculptures in today, between the four of those commanders, I think... Huo has to come off the list. And the, at most, I like to have three commanders of any one troop type um, in that top priority and low priority designation. So this means that I'm saying that if you had none of the commanders up top here, I think Zuge Leong is probably the best investment you could do in the game. I might swap uh, Liu Che over one and say, hey, yo, Liu, Liu Che is really good. You can definitely make an argument for his being number one, but we're going to put him at number two. I put Herman Prime as number three, and then I put Belly Prime as number four. Because if you're open feeling and you bring five marches, like the target instantly is taking more damage. And even if you don't bring that many marches, other people can be swarming it and contribute to your having enough marches to get that crazy debuff. So there it is. There's your top priority commanders. From there, I actually like this order of Skippy Prime, then Nevsky, then Joan, and then Ash. And I don't think Ash is as high a priority simply because a bunch of his kit requires you to be on enemy territory and not alliance territory. I guess you could say just not on alliance territory. You need to be off your alliance territory. And a lot of fighting does happen off territory. But if you're on defense, kind of sucks. <laughs> if you're getting pushed, which is the time when you really need punch... Ash still is good, but loses some of that, that flair. If he didn't, I might move him up more. Whereas Zuge Leong and Herman Prime, like they ask so little of you and do so much. So much. It's actually, yay, a good time to be an archer player. Those two archer commanders up at the top are really good. And it's honestly a great time to be a cavalry player because if you are using three cavalry marches, then you're looking for one more cav commander on top of the five we've been talking about. So Nevsky, Joan, Huo, William, Belly Prime, and you're either going to be using Justinian or XY or a leadership commander. And that's probably how you round out your three cavalry marches in the open field, assuming you aren't, you know, getting to the point where you can, you know, get specialized commanders. You could always use Mehmed, right? Free to play, accessible commander, and does really fantastic as a secondary to a good cavalry commander, all right? From here, I'm going to raid Eleanor. And, you know, spoiler alert, I don't think she's a field commander. She goes in the niche role category, right? She's a garrison commander, is what it is. 
I think she'll be really good for passes. I think she's going to be better than people are expecting. I think she's going to be good in KVKs where there is not swarming happening. And there's a lot of those situations that, I mean, look, like I, I, I can't remember the last time I was in a KVK that didn't involve a lot of swarming. So I think if you're in a smaller kingdom, Eleanor is definitely going to deliver value. Otherwise, you can drop her in a pass. And we tested her uh, using a Rise of Kingdom simulator, and she seemed to do well. So I'll have a card for that video in the end screen if you want to see the Eleanor testing we did. If you want to see my first look at Belisarius Prime, I really feel like I underestimated his kit, in part because I didn't think his expertise was a debuff. I'll have a card in the end screen is that one uh, for that one as well. And just consider smashing that subscribe button because as soon as Belisarius Prime is in-game, we're going to max him out and test him. I mean, if I have to max him on my restart account, then that's what I'm going to do, and we're going to start using him. And I think if I'm going to use only one march of cavalry on my restart account, I actually think it's going to be Joan Prime as the primary and Belisarius Prime as the secondary. That's probably the way I would run that. And I think the reason I like that is area of effect damage, nice damage mitigation, good buffs to the team. I think I would prefer the Joan Prime over the Nevsky. Not that I think the Joan Prime is better than Nevsky, but if we're talking about a Belly Prime pair, you certainly can't use the Belly as the primary. But check the card in the end screen to see why I feel that way. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments as well. I'll be updating this list after we test. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.